Good morning. Let's go Lord in prayer. Father God, we come to you today in the name of Jesus. We decree and declare that Jesus is our Lord to the glory of God the Father. And Lord, we pray for our nation. We speak peace to the United States of America. We decree the United States of America is a righteous nation, cleansed and covered by the blood of Jesus. We decree and declare that Jesus Christ is the Lord of the United States of America. We give you all the praise and glory. And Lord, we pray for our leaders. You said in your word, I exhort therefore the first of all supplications, prayers, intercession, and giving the thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all in authority, that we may lead a quiet, peaceful life, all God is known us. So we thank you, Lord, for our president, our vice president, senators and congressmen, the legislators, Supreme Court justices, federal, state, local judges, governors, mayors, police officers, the armed forces, the FBI, and the CIA, DHS, for every person's authority over us. Lord, we thank you they hearken unto your voice. We pray they receive Jesus, Lord. If they haven't, that they do so. If they have, that they begin to learn about who they are in Christ Jesus and led by the Holy Spirit. And Lord, we pray for all the nations of the world, for Russia, the Commonwealth, the European nations, the Muslim nations, the Arab nations, the Asian nations, the third world countries, the communistic nations in Israel, that every nation has a gospel preached as a witness, then the should come. Father God, we ask you to send labors across people's path. You said the harvest is plenty, the labors of you. Pray, therefore, Lord, harvest you, but send for labors harvest. So we thank you, Lord, people, our answer call to God, taking the gospel out to all the world. And Father God, we pray for all those missionaries out there, Lord, those apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers and co-laborers. They preach your word in season. I thank you, Lord, for anointing them and equipping them to do the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Father God, we thank the body of Christ that abounds the work of the Lord, that we're more than conquerors. We triumph in Christ Jesus. And Lord, I thank you for anointing me today that we will say and do what you have me say and do. Thank you, Lord, for giving me up this Holy Ghost. And I pray for all those Lord, as we hear your word and hear from the Holy Ghost. We'll go forth and become doers of the Lord, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Glad you're able to join today. Let's go over here to the book of Revelation, and we'll go over here to Revelation chapter 1. Now, there's more of these verses throughout the epistle letters, but let's go to this one here in, Romans, in Revelation chapter 1. Now, the scripture says here in verse 5 and verse 6, And from Jesus Christ, who's the faithful witness, the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins, his own blood, that he might... That he, and, and hath, she may, hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Now let's jump over to your book of Romans. Let's go to Romans chapter 5. Now the scripture says here in Romans chapter 5, verse 9, much, much more than being justified by his blood, we should be saved in the wrath through him. The scripture says in verse, well, let's read verse 15, 17, and 19 while we're here. But the uh, but not as offense, so also as a free gift. For through the offense of one, many be dead. Much more the grace of God and the gift of grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, the bound to many. Number 17. For by one man's offense, death reign by one. Much more they've received the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness to reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Now verse 19. For, as, for, as, uh, for, as by, this, for by one man's disobedience, many raise sinners. So by the obedience of one, many shall be made righteous. Now, these scriptures show his here about the blood of Jesus and what Jesus did for us. I mean, it's, this is just, you know, scratch, sort of scratch the surface here. But nevertheless, it's Jesus' blood that qualifies us to receive from God. And so often, people, are, have been, Christians, have been disqualified by ministers and teachings and preaching that, you know, um, you, you, you don't deserve this. Or uh, some even go as far as this passed away. I mean, love everybody, pray for all the ministers. But we need to realize is that Jesus finished the salvation plan that God had for mankind before the foundation of the world. When Jesus went to the cross, he said it's finished. So he completed it. So we don't have to complete our salvation. I wish someone had told me that when I got saved because I got born again so many times. Every time I'd sin I'd, or think of some sin I'd done a long time ago, I'd ask, not only ask God to forgive me, and I'd, I'd confess Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, and pray like the sinner's prayer again. But I didn't know any scripture. And so scripture is going to help set you free about especially what God promised and who you are in Christ Jesus. So as believers, we always want to work on our mind with God's word because, the, you know, you have to guard your mind from the thoughts that come to you. The reason you don't have this is because of what you did something wrong or because, you know, you didn't get this because you didn't pray enough or you didn't read your Bible enough. Well, it's not by works we receive these things. No more than we receive Jesus our Lord by works. We receive everything God has by faith and he provided for us by his grace. He gave us the faith to receive from him. 
And we read there in Revelation, it's the blood of Jesus that washes our sins. See, not something we do. It's the blood of Jesus that cleanses us. And the Bible says in 1 John chapter 1, verse 7, that we're cleansed by the blood of Jesus. Um, in fact, I'm going to read this. Let's go to 1 John, like towards the book of Revelation again. In 1 John, I'm going to read this verse 7 in chapter 1. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. And the scripture says here, in chapter 2, verse 12, I write you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. Well, our sins have been forgiven by Jesus Christ. Now, you think, you know, everybody would know that as a Christian, but nevertheless, what keeps people receiving from God is many times thinking about what they did wrong. Sometimes people think that, you know, the, the reason they got in an automobile accident is because of some kind of sin they committed yesterday. You know, people say, well, now, if you want God's protection, you have to make sure you always obey God. Well, the problem with that kind of teaching is that no one is ever going to obey God perfectly, no matter how hard they try. The only person we read there that's done this is Romans chapter 5, verse 19. Jesus obeyed God. His obedience, his perfect obedience and his blood and what he did, that he purchased our salvation, redemption, our healing when he went to the cross. So we just simply receive what he's done for us by faith and thank the Father God for that. Thank God for good works and thank God for good, doing good deeds and being a blessing to humanity. But the never, nevertheless, we don't earn those things by doing those things. You know, in the Old Testament, if you do this, I'll bless you. And so often people pass that on to you, you know, you know do good and God will bless you. Well, the problem is Jesus, you know, with that kind of teaching, is that Jesus already blessed us. We're not trying to get God to bless us. We're not trying to get God to heal us. We're not trying to get God to deliver us. What we want to do is go to God's Word, especially his epistle letters, and find out about who we are in Christ Jesus, and begin, begin to decree and declare what God's Word says about us. So often Christians have been disqualified for receiving healing or deliverance because the minister, whoever, got them to looking at themselves. And I was in the hospital as a teenager for, for months, and different ministers would come and visit me. Now, sometimes I'd act like I was asleep because I don't want to be bothered with it. And, you know, looking back on it, not one minister came and told me 1 Peter 2.24. I'm not make, judging these people. I don't have any ill feelings against them. If I saw them today, I'd love them. But the point is, and of course, I don't read scripture myself, but, the, but no one brought a deliverance message. It was always this kind of act thing that they brought with them, you must have done something really bad. So at 18 years old, I keep going over my mind, what did I do worse than the friends that I run around with? Because the friends I ran around with, or were running around with, you know, they've done worse things than I have, and they're not in here. They have been told you're going to die and all this other stuff. So I'm going through that. And then your own, I received Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. You know, you go back on that witch hunt, so to speak, trying to find something bad in your life, and this is the reason you don't have it. You know, I didn't walk in love, and that's why I got a flat tire. Well, you know, we can walk in love, but you know, no one is ever going to be perfect to walk in love. And no Christian is ever going to be perfect at obeying God. Thank God we can walk in love, but thank God we can, we can obey God. But our blessings aren't hinged on our performance or our good efforts. Our blessings are already been given to us. So that gets rid of the idea, I'm going to try to do good so God would do good to me. And see, many people have known of someone that seemed to be a very good Christian. Maybe there's a minister, maybe there's a pastor, loved the Lord, worked hard for God, gave their life for Jesus. There's no one had more faith than they did. You can just ask anybody. They were kind to everybody, even people that persecuted. They were so kind, and they died and never did get healed. And so look at them. See, they loved the Lord. They did all these things, and they never did get healed. That just goes to show God doesn't heal everybody. Well, you know, many times you notice when you witness to people about receiving Jesus Christ as Lord, they always tell you about what church they go to and how good they are. And you just ask them, have you received Jesus, Lord, and Savior? You know, but they begin to defend themselves. I know I talk that way. You know, there's some businessmen that came to me one time. I'm about 19 years old or so, and I was working at this place. And they came up to me and started talking about Jesus. Now, made me real scared, real uncomfortable, upset, offended, because they're talking to me like this about that I need to receive Jesus or Christ my Lord and Savior, or actually ask me, have I done that? Well, I begin to talk about some things that I've done was good, that I always go to church, and I did this for the Big Brothers organization, and I helped these people out, and I helped that people out. And they didn't touch this. They kept telling me about Jesus. 
So finally, I let them know some born again people that I knew, because that's what these guys want me to do. They want me to become born again. I let them know that I know some people that are born again, and look what they've done. So I was doing everything I can to dodge from receiving Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. Trying to think some good things I've done. Then when I realized I haven't done everything good, well, then I began to make fun of people and judge people that call themselves born again. Look what they've done. No, we just simply come to Jesus and receive him. And whatever the father has belongs to us. And this is something you know, the prodigal son's brother couldn't get a hold of. He saw his brother come home who'd waste all his living, his inheritance that the dad had given him. And the elder son was so upset he wouldn't even join with them. The dad goes out and talks to him and tells him, you know, all that I have is thine. You could have it all along. Well, I've been here all this time. You've never killed a calf or threw it a party for me. You see, people that get into trying to keep the law and try to be good to earn from God, they become miserable. You know, the rich young ruler thought he had been so good and told Jesus, oh, all these things you've said, I've kept from my youth. And Jesus said, one thing thou lackest. You see, when you try to qualify from God, to God to receive from God because of what you've done, you always come up short. So thank God we don't have to qualify to receive from our Father God. We just simply receive what he provided for us, that he made us new creatures in Christ Jesus. And the idea of people telling people that you're going to, you'll have divine protection as long as you always perfectly obey God, as long as you're at the right place, the right time, as long as you've never sinned. Well, the problem with that is that, first of all, it's not scriptural. And secondly, is you're never going to obey God perfectly. I mean, we, you, know, you could sin on the way to church just by a traffic jam or something like that. And then what, lose your blessings because of that? No, blessings cannot be earned by being good. They're just freely given to us. So that takes the work and effort out of our part trying to earn God. I spent most of my Christian life, after I got born again, I mean, spent my Christian life trying to be complete. Because there's always someone around you to point to your faults. And then the devil will help accommodate you by bringing faults to you. Well, God doesn't see us in the flesh. He sees us in Christ Jesus. Now think about how God sees Christ. He doesn't see any faults in him. Of course, there isn't any. But he doesn't see any in him. He sees us that way. He sees us as sanctified. He sees us as holy. He sees us righteous. He sees us complete. We're not trying to become a completed Christian. Jesus already completed the work for us. We're not trying to finish the gospel or finish our salvation plan. Jesus said it is finished in John chapter 19, verse 30, as they hung on that cross. He didn't die until he finished the work of God that God needed him to do. Then when he did, when he took all the curse and all the wrath of God and all the judgment and all the sins of the world and all the curse, that was on mankind, it was in this world because of sin, because of what Adam had done. He took all that and then he, get, he passed away. He gave up the ghost. And, but he didn't leave, didn't die until he finished the works. And just before he did give up the ghost, he said, it is finished. We don't finish our salvation. It's been freely given to us. We couldn't be ever become good enough to delete one sin in our life. Now we're not supposed to sin, but what's going to help us get out of the bondage of the sin is just can continually can confess and decree and declare, I am the righteous of God in Christ. You know, if you've been taught God's word about healing, you know, if you, if you had symptoms in your body, you wouldn't go around telling people you were sick, especially if you learned about confession, you know. You, they can look at you and think you're going to look like you're going to ready to drop over, but boy, praise the Lord, you're going to say, by his straps, I'm healed. The point about this is that we don't say we're sick to get healed. We don't have to say we've sinned to be forgiven. We are forgiven by Jesus' blood. You know, actually on this subject, it's not confessing sin that wipes away the sin. It's the blood of Jesus that wipes away sins. According to what we read there in Revelation, it's his blood that washes us. You know, it makes you feel better if you confess to God some things you've done wrong. But actually, according to the word, we are forgiven. We read there in Colossians chapter 2, verse 13. God has forgiven us. He's completed the work. What we need to do is simply receive what Jesus has done for us and take the work and effort out of it. In the world, we do work. We work for our paycheck. And we work to do things in this world. But the thing is, we don't work to earn from God because he calls it a free gift. Righteousness is, fr is free. Become a new creature in Christ Jesus is free. The healing is free. Deliverance is free. You know, Jesus never told one person the gospel, you know, go get your life in order and come back and then I'll pray for you. No, he didn't talk that way to people. I mean, whether you, no matter what kind of sin you were involved, you came to Jesus, you got your miracle. You got your blessing because he freely gave to us. He said, I didn't come to condemn. And so often the churches went out and condemned the world. 
They've condemned, they've got so many people who won't go to church today because Christians at work condemned them, judged them because of their sexual things that they were involved in or whatever else it may be and, can, and condemned them. Well, that caused people to, they already got the devil telling them they're no good. And then the church tells them this way, well, we need to receive people. And be a blessing to them. You, have, as a minister and a pastor, you have to be led by spirit how to ha handle these situations. But nevertheless, we should start out with compassion first, like Jesus always did. Jesus is moved with compassion. We're in Christ, and we're always moved with compassion. Not to impress people that we're good people and good Christians, but simply just share what God has given to us. And people need to be prayed for. You know, we read there in, in 2 Timothy chapter four, verse eighteen. Paul, by the Holy Spirit, said that God is able to deliver me and will deliver me, what he's saying, from every evil work and preserve me in his heavenly kingdom. When you see people's in bondage, you begin to create, according to Colossians 1, 13, they're delivered. And, and 2 Timothy chapter 4, that God's delivering them. He's working their in their life. Everybody has something in their life that they'd be ashamed if someone else knew about it. But the thing is, you know, so often we try to look good among people. But nevertheless, God sees our heart. And he's here to help us through Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit won't bring up something we did wrong and condemn us over it. He's not the condemner. Again, Jesus didn't come to condemn. He came to set mankind free. He came to give us abundant life. He wished above all things that we prosper and be in health. He wants us to enjoy life. He doesn't want us to suffer things and be tortured with persecution, ridicule, and everything else, and then we'll learn something by it. Sure, persecution comes. But, you know, thank God we're more than conquerors. We triumph in Christ Jesus. We know who we are in Christ Jesus, and, and we just don't let that affect us. What people think about us, we don't let that affect us. This so often keeps people from stepping on God's promises because, you know, if I believe that way and do that, what would people think about me? Well, just cast those thoughts down and resist them in Jesus' name and just know that God is protecting you and your family and loved ones not because of something you've done. You know, again, there in Exodus chapter 15, or chapter 12, we kind of referred to this the other day, really didn't get into, much into it. But nevertheless, you know, God told those people, his people, put the blood upon the doorpost, the lentils. Offer up this lamb, partake of the lamb, eat the lamb, and then put this blood on the doorpost. And the death angel comes over, he's going to see this. Well, you see now, not one person that was in that house died or got sick with the plague. Now, they, because why? They applied this animal's blood to what God said to do. Now, none of those people were perfect. There was not one person there that had, not even Moses or whoever else was allowed there, or Joshua. Not one of them had perfect performance. And thank God for obeying God. But that doesn't get us right with God because we, we're just as much righteous when we sin as if we didn't sin. Because of what Jesus did, he gave us a free gift. We don't become righteous when we stop sinning. We don't become sanctified when we stop sinning. We are, once we receive Jesus Christ, we have dominion over sin. Sin does not have dominion over us, and we are the righteous of God in Christ. And we need to see ourselves the way God sees us. God sees us as righteous. So those people did what God said to do, and the plague could not touch them. Now, we're in Christ Jesus, you and I, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13. So God shows us that we're in Christ. So wherever we go, we're protected. We don't have to be in a house to be protected. We're, wherever we go, we are protected. Now we need to make, obey man's rules and laws, according to uh, Romans chapter 13, verse 1 and 2. But nevertheless, when everything seems to be like right in the world, wherever we do go, we are protected. What we need to do is claim that and receive it by faith in Jesus' name, the 91st Psalm. And not only that, be led by the Holy Spirit about where we're supposed to go. You may have plans sometimes about you're going to do something, you're going to go someplace, but what do you have inside your spirit? See, as believers, we're to be led by the inward witness. This is the leading we get. And we should follow. This is what the Holy Spirit will do. He'll let us know. He'll lead us by our spirit about what to do. Thank God for our heads. Thank God for our minds and brains. And thank God for our emotions. But they're not to dominate us. You know, you know before, and you've had this happen before, that you know, you, you had some plans, you're going to do something. Maybe you have some money, we're going to use it for someone. Or save it for something. You know, I've got to buy a new lawnmower or whatever. And all of a sudden it comes to your heart, I want you to give this to this guy at the church or, you know, the guy that's down the street. You got to knock on the door of some total stranger neighborhood and hand them some money. Just simply because you feel in your heart you're supposed to do this. Well, that's great. We need to follow that inward witness and follow the, the prime leading the guidance of the Holy Spirit. See, many times people never step out for God because they get so uncomfortable. 
But see, to, to get past this, you've got to keep stepping out for God. And eventually that uncomfortableness and how you look and how you feel, whether they're going to think of me, if I do this, they, you know, they may not need the money, they may not even like me, they never talk to me in any way, they're liable to think I'm trying to do something. That's going to help you get rid of all that. What keeps many, many Christians in bondage is just simply never stepping out and enjoying life, what God gave to us and purchased for us through Jesus Christ. So our protection is not because we obey God perfectly. See, so often something happens to some Christian. First thing other Christians think about, I'm talking about people born again, think about, wonder what they did wrong. They've had to do something wrong. they got some kind of secret sin in their life. You ever have people come and try to minister to you and talk to you about a secret sin? You know, the Bible says the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. They don't give you life. They kind of bring condemnation to you and guilt. You see, condemnation and guilt needs to be rejected, refused, not accepted. The Holy Spirit, with the gifts of the Spirit, does not condemn. He edifies, exhorts, and comforts. But people use, supposedly, the gifts of the Spirit to keep people in bondage. You could go to a church service. I know I've been in before. Hopefully, I've never done one like this, but, you know, we're all learning, or should be. But, you know, the, now, the reason the Holy Spirit's not moving here today or tonight is because there's, 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 the church has sin in their life. And if we'll get rid of the sin, then God's really going to move. You know, if you want God to really move in America, we've got to get rid of our sin. Now, what in the world is a person going to do to get rid of sin? Promise God they won't do it again? You know? It's, it, well, and people have different sins for people. I mean, you, there's some people who go to extreme that chewing gum is a sin. And it goes on and on and on. People add to it. But you see, again, our protection and the move of the Holy Spirit has nothing to do with us being good enough. We can never be good enough to find the Holy Spirit to move through us. We, we're the righteous of God in Christ. We're, we're so perfect, our spirit man is, that the Holy Spirit could come in and dwell in us when we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We, our spirit man became so perfect, so complete, that actually the Holy Spirit came and dwelled inside of us. So he's not going to leave us simply because we did something wrong and we're not supposed to do wrong. But the problem is everybody's going to miss God. That doesn't mean we don't try to serve the Lord and be a blessing. But all the time we're doing this, we're not trying to earn things from God. We're simply, we tithe, we give, we walk in love, we pray for other people, we, hate, we help our neighbors instead of hating them. And we do what God's word tells us to do. And we're just doing this unto the Lord Jesus Christ. He sees what we do. And when we plant those seeds, God produces a blessing for us in our life. But again, it doesn't make us right with God. If we never read our Bible again, we never prayed again, never went to church again, that doesn't make us unright with God if there's such a word. We're complete with God because of Jesus. It's, we should go to church, yes. We should be a blessing to other people. We should read our Bible. But that doesn't do away with sin. That doesn't make us qualified to receive from God. There's nothing a person can do once they receive Jesus Christ as Lord to become qualified with God. So often Christians just believe in God for finances or healing. Someone comes along and tries to point to their faults in their life. Like the person has no faults in their life. God will not anoint you to point to people's faults. God's not going to judge America because people have done wrong. Jesus took our judgment when he went to the cross. You know, in the Old Testament, you had Sodom and Gomorrah, but you didn't have Jesus. And the big difference, you know, let's pretend like behind me there's a cross, a crucifixion. All that crucifixion shows what God did to Jesus. He put all of our sins and all the wrath of God and all the anger of God upon Jesus Christ. What makes the difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament is Jesus and his blood and what his blood did. We don't have the blood of an animal offered up for us. We got the blood of Jesus was offered up for us. And that his blood is always cleansing us. We just read there in 1 John 1, 7. His blood is constantly cleansing us. Not because we're constantly confessing sin, but his blood's constantly can, is cleansing us. People sin as Christians more than they think they do. Just sort of think that I'll be qualified to be protected in my family if I'll just always obey God. Boy, if you, if you disobey God, the first thing you're going to lose is your protection. You get out of love, you won't be protected. You, get, you know, you, you, something's liable to happen to your dog or your animal or your house or your farm or whatever, you know, all because, you know, you got in strife yesterday. Well, we don't get in strife as believers, and we need to love the brother, and we need to treat people right. We should, you know, many times we have to apologize to people because we said something wrong or we were cross or whatever. But with God, he sees us complete. He sees us righteous. He sees us as holy people, blessed of the Lord, unreprovable in his sight, the scriptures teach us. And we need to renew our mind to God's word so we see ourselves that way. 
But so often people live in fear, afraid they're going to miss God. Afraid now, you know, if they don't do something, they're going to lose their protection. Well, the children of Israel, times to shout as the church, all they had to do is do what God said to do, apply the blood. And again, there wasn't one person there was perfect. There wasn't one, as good as Moses and Joshua and Caleb were. None of those people were perfect by what they did. They all missed God, like we all have. But the point is, today in our new covenant, we have Jesus. We have the blood of Jesus. And that's what keeps God from judging people. Now, if a person rejects Jesus and never receives Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior, then they're rejecting God's pardon. They're rejecting God's forgiveness. And then what they've done wrong will be judged. Because they simply refuse to receive Jesus, our Lord and Savior, or their Lord and Savior. When we receive Jesus, we receive our forgiveness. We receive our protection. We receive our deliverance. This isn't something we compartmentalize and break it all up. It's all a package plan. Because we're he that dwelleth in the secret place, the Most High. When you receive Jesus Christ the Lord, you're in Christ. And there's no greater protection than being in Christ Jesus. That's that secret place of the Most High. And I will say, Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God and my trust. Surely he shall deliver the snare of fowl or the noise of pestilence. He shall cover his feathers and his wings shall trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid of terror by night, nor of fly by day, nor the pest of walk or darkness, nor destruction of waste and doom day. A thousand may fall to thy side, and ten thousand are right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only the eyes shall I behold and see the word wicked, because thou hast made the Lord which is my refuge, even the most high that habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, nor shall any plague come on thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear their hands, lest thou dash with stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and otter, and young lion and dragon shall tread upon thee. Because he says, love upon me, therefore I would live. I'm set him high, because he's known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble, and I will live and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him, show him my salvation. You're faced with trouble today, my dear friend. You're God's child, you're God's son, you're God's daughter. He's going to deliver you out of this. The things that people make fun of you and persecute you and judge you over, God will turn the whole thing around because he's your father and he loves you. Our father God is so good. He knows the hairs of our head and he knows when a sparrow falls. So God is not too busy that he's not interested in what's going on in our life. We're not taught in the Bible that God's too busy for us. He's the one that wanted children. And all the Father has belongs to us. So don't think about the things that you may be going through today is because you did something wrong. Focus on Jesus. Don't focus on yourself. Keep looking at him. How would I do that, Brother Rich? By just going to the promises and reading those promises to yourself. Get in Colossians and Ephesians. You won't understand it at first, but the Holy Spirit will begin to teach you. Ask Jesus to teach you who you are in Christ Jesus. And he will, because he wants you to know. He wants you to know that you're complete. He's not ashamed of you. He's not upset at you. He's not disappointed in you. This is my beloved son who I'm well pleased. Just as much as God was well pleased with Jesus there at John Noble Baptist Water Baptism Service, that's how God is pleased with you today, because he sees you in Christ Jesus. And by taking promises from God's word and building those up inside of you, you'll begin yourself, see yourself as complete in Christ Jesus. And just reject all the guilt and condemnation. And ask God to show you about who you are in Christ. And he will. I want to pray for you today. Father God, I pray for my dear friend and viewer today. I thank you, Lord, for meeting all their needs. I decree and declare they're protected, they're healed, because your word says so. And I thank you, Lord, for meeting all of their financial needs, Lord. You've got a miracle position for them. Not just a job in this world, but a position in Jesus' name. And I pray for all our dear pastor friends and loved ones that their churches are flourishing in Jesus' name, that God's adding to their church every day. What the devil meant was bad. God turns around for the good. And every good gift and every perfect gift is manifest in their life. And we thank you, Father God, that all these needs are met. We release our faith today in Jesus Christ, and we receive all of our needs met. Things we're not even aware of that we have in our life. We receive the need met for that. And we thank you, Lord, we can cast all of our cares, all of our worries, all of our anxieties over on you, and you're taking care of everything. And we thank you, Lord, for taking care of America. And we thank you, Father God, you're taking care of the world, that everything's going to turn around and people will see it was God that did it. We thank you, Lord, for all these that are blessed in Jesus' name. If you have prayer requests, please contact me. I'd like to stand with you and believe God for your miracle in your life. I want to encourage you to tune in. And if you don't get our newsletters and things like that, we have our ministry, sign up for that. We'll send them out to you. They don't cost you anything. Till next time, it's Pastor Jess Rich, reminding you that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father.